There's Brad here. So continuing the Charlie Munger series on human misjudgments. Today we're going to talk about the sixth tendency, which is curiosity tendency. Now this is perhaps the shortest section in the human misjudgments chapter in Poor Charlie's Almanac. And it took me a little while to figure out how this tendency could mislead, right? Could cause negative biases in humans. But I think I figured out a couple ways that it can mislead. So I'm going to read the section and then we'll go into those uh, things to watch out for. Curiosity tendency. There is a lot of innate curiosity in mammals, but its non-human version is highest among apes and monkeys. Man's curiosity, in turn, is much stronger than that of his simian relatives. In advanced human civilization, culture greatly increases the effectiveness of curiosity in advancing knowledge. For instance, Athens, including its colony Alexandria, developed much math and science out of pure curiosity while the Romans made almost no contribution to either math or science. They instead concentrated their attention on the practical engineering of mines, roads, aqueducts, etc. Curiosity, enhanced by the best of modern education, which is by definition a minority part in many places, much helps man to prevent or reduce bad consequences arising from other psychological tendencies. The curious are also provided with much fun and wisdom long after formal education has ended. So the way Charlie is framing curiosity tendency here is that, you know, it really helps us um, prevent or reduce bad consequences arising from some of the other tendencies uh, that I'm covering here in the series. But, you know, I dug up some other sources online about curiosity tendency that shed a little bit more light on how it can mislead us, this curiosity tendency itself. So I want to go to this resource first, uh, Bias 179. Whew, that's a lot more than Charlie has. Um, I like this definition for curiosity bias, a cognitively induced deprivation that arises from the perception of a gap in knowledge and understanding. Now that, that really struck me as, as spot on. And it's not, I don't think I've ever thought about curiosity in this way. Curiosity to me usually feels um, exciting uh, rather than trying to fill this kind of void uh, between knowledge and understanding. But let's dig in a little bit more. Closing the curiosity gap. In a paper titled The Psychology of Curiosity in 1994, psychologist George Lowenstein of Carnegie Mellon introduced a definition of curiosity that did a better job capturing curiosity's many traits. Lowenstein theorized that curiosity was a gap in knowledge or understanding. He believes curiosity arose when attention became focused on one of those gaps. Information gaps, he theorized, produce the feeling of deprivation we call curiosity. A curious individual is motivated to obtain the missing information to reduce or eliminate that feeling of deprivation. Two factors define information gaps, what one knows and what one wants to know. Interestingly, this means one can only be curious about topics where one has some existing knowledge. Curiosity, therefore, should be positively related to one's knowledge in a particular domain, and it is. As people gain information about a topic, they become more likely to focus on what they do not know the gaps. Lowenstein provides an example. If someone knew the capitals to 30 of the 50 states, they are likely to frame their knowledge in terms of what they know. 
I know three state capitals. However, if they know 47 of 50 state capitals, they are likely to frame their knowledge in terms of what is missing. There are three state capitals I do not know. This shift is the genesis of curiosity because at that moment, the individual suddenly becomes focused on the gap in his or her knowledge. This suggests that curiosity is unlikely to arise in the absence of an existing knowledge base and that the likelihood of experiencing curiosity should increase as an individual obtains information about a particular topic. So I just found that very insightful. Uh, and then of course, our favorite artificial intelligence here, ChatGPT. I asked ChatGPT, explain curiosity tendency and how it can mislead us and then provide antidotes for how to combat those adverse effects. ChatGPT, curiosity tendency refers to our innate desire to seek out new information, experiences, and knowledge. It is a powerful motivator that drives us to explore, discover, and learn about the world around us. However, this tendency can also mislead us in several ways. One way curiosity tendency can mislead us is by leading us to focus too much on information that confirms our existing beliefs and biases while ignoring information that contradicts them. So, you know, curiosity can really drive this, this hunger to accumulate more evidence to support what we already believe, okay? Which is something we just covered, uh, which was inconsistency avoidance tendency, which is um, another way to say confirmation bias, right? They're, they're, I think they're pretty much identical. Uh, this is known as confirmation bias, and it can cause us to miss out on important information or make faulty decisions based on incomplete or inaccurate information. Uh, another way curiosity tendency can mislead us is by causing us to become overly focused on trivial or unimportant details while missing the bigger picture. This is known as the forest for the trees problem and it can lead to decision paralysis or missed opportunities. I've definitely felt this, okay? Researching a stock, um, there's just, you never feel like you quite have enough information, right? To, to make an informed decision. So I think this is, this is a very valuable thing to keep in mind regarding curiosity tendency. It can be easy kind of go down these rabbit holes of just trying to amass more and more information about a topic uh, that isn't really relevant to making a decision one way or another. Uh, and we can lose the forest for the trees. Finally, curiosity tendency can also lead us to take unnecessary risks or engage in dangerous behavior in pursuit of new experiences or knowledge. So this is how I used to think about curiosity, really up until today. Um, it's fun, it's exciting, right? New experiences. This is known as sensation seeking. It can be particularly problematic when it comes to activities like drug use, extreme sports, risky sexual behavior, okay? But this is not the version of curiosity that's highlighted by this article, right? this desire to fill a gap, this feeling of deprivation, where there's that gap between what we know, uh, what is it, knowledge, um, what we know and what we want to know, right? So to combat these adverse effects, okay, there are several antidotes be aware of our biases, right? We're all taking strides here, watching this series. Be aware of our biases. By acknowledging our biases, we can actively seek out information that challenges our beliefs and assumptions rather than just reinforcing them. Two, look for the big picture. This is the forest for the trees. 
To avoid getting bogged down in details, we can try to focus on the larger context of the information or situation at hand. So we're not just blindly consuming information, um, but we're looking for specific information that can help us make better decisions. Three, seek out diverse perspectives. By seeking out a variety of perspectives and opinions, we can broaden our understanding of a topic and avoid getting stuck in an echo chamber, right? Uh, I'm reminded of, of Ray Dalio here at Bridgewater, where, you know, he wants to find the smartest people in the room who disagree with him on a particular topic, right? To, so he can challenge that view and um, continuously get closer and closer to what's true. Uh, number four, practice mindfulness. By paying attention to our thoughts and emotions, we can better understand our motivations and impulses and make more deliberate and conscious decisions. Number five, evaluate risk. Before engaging in any new experience or behavior, we can weigh the potential risks and benefits and make an informed decision about whether it's worth pursuing. So good stuff there from ChatGPT. Um, I'm a little surprised Munger had such a short s segment on curiosity tendency in the book. Um, and I'm glad I did a little bit more digging because uh, this kind of helps me see and understand what are some of the pitfalls of curiosity tendency and you know what can we be on the lookout for. So uh, that's it for curiosity tendency. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.